The Ottawa County Jail was built in 1862 to house criminals in the Ottawa district. Anybody could be prisoned here. There was women, there was children, families, hardened criminals, people who owed money. There was public hangings, torture cells. There was a lot of death, a lot of disease. Lots of different things that are even unthinkable today. Guards can actually torture or hurt prisoners should they want to. The inhumane living conditions, solitary confinement cells, which just wasn't a prison that anybody would want to stay in. This is more like hell on earth. The Carleton County Jail is haunted. It's probably one of the most haunted buildings in Canada. This jail is littered with spirits. People have numerous experiences that are staying in this jail today that's now a youth hostel. Housed in this prison were many different types of prisoners. You had murderers alongside petty thieves. Even children were housed here. Children were placed in jail as a result of theft, and often when families didn't pay their debts, the whole family was incarcerated in the jail. I mean, there's a lot of stories about some people hearing children crying, people hearing children speaking, um, maybe songs, stories, things like that. The need to have a women's prison solely in this prison was needed. So they converted the ninth floor, which was once for a couple of years the hospital, into a women's prison. The majority of the women staying there were prostitutes being taken off the streets and put into this prison. Some people believe that the legacy of all this human suffering still remains within the prison today. Some people even believe that it may be haunted as a result of all the different things that happened here. This place actually had a number of different things happening in the, ho in the prison all the time. Even public hangings happened here. Canadians have always been fascinated with crime. And at one time, thousands would participate by attending public hangings in this country. One of the most famous people who were hanged at the jail was Patrick Whalen. And Patrick Whalen was accused of murdering Thomas Darcy McGee, one of the fathers of Confederation. And Patrick Whalen, when he was hanged on February the 11th, on the 11th hour of 1869, 5,000 people watched Patrick Whalen swing. So, believe it or not, Patrick Whalen believes he was innocent. And that's why he stays there. Okay, this is death row. And this cell just here is a cell where Mr. Patrick James Wayland spent 10 months awaiting his execution along with his own personal guard, Mr. John Lyle. On the day of his execution, he would be taken out of here and accompanied with his guard and the prison warden and a clergyman all the way down to the gallows, taking what we call the walk of death. Uh, when you get down to the gallows, you'll stand in front of the trap door and the priest will read you your last rites. On the words, may God have mercy on your soul, you'll step back onto the trap door and hang to your death. Mr. Whalen did not actually hang on these words. He hung on his own personal speech, which, uh, which goes something along the lines of, uh, I forgive all those who have wronged me. I forgive all those I have wronged. God save Ireland and God save my soul. And on those words, he stepped back and hung to his death. But we also have a number of sightings of Mr. Patrick James Whalen. People staying in here say they either had someone walk straight through the bars or open the door and come and, uh, come and talk to them. Uh, the description we take always matches that of Mr. Patrick James Whalen. Uh, the reason that Mr. Patrick James Whalen uh, haunts the place, they say, is that uh, firstly, the date he was hung. He was hung at 11 o'clock on the 11th of February, 1869. Superstition dictates that you are to be hung at the 13th hour of the 13th day of the month. Therefore, Whalen was two hours and two days too early. Such was uh, their haste to get over and done with. Secondly, he was buried with his noose around his neck, uh, something that, again, superstition dictates is not to happen as the noose is to be burnt. Thirdly, he is buried on, on uh, prison property, which is now hostile property. And keep in mind, those that were hanged, they were not allowed to be buried in a holy cemetery. There has been stories that people say they see a figure in the cells. Some people say that they think it's another hostel or somebody staying here until he walks through the bars. And then they go, oh, what was that? If I said to you, uh, I, I saw a man, he had a big plumed hat on, big feathers sticking out the end, and he had a sword at his side, and he had, he had funny little shoes, and you say, gosh, Christopher Columbus haunts this place, you'd describe Prince, Prince Christopher Columbus. People would say, yeah, big hat with a... I don't know what Christopher Columbus looked like. But, but all you need to do is mention a few things that would suit a, a, a person that you're looking for and it will match. So uh, what is the match for a prisoner who's hung there? 
what do you say? He's short, he's tall, uh, he's got a mustache. Y you know, out of 10 or 12 things you say, maybe only two or three of them match, but they'd match a whole bunch of people. But it's very easy for people to say, oh, this is a direct hit. Yeah, I find when I walk on death row, you know that feeling you get with the piglies on the back of your neck? I always get that. People report having felt cold spots here. They say the cells are colder, some areas are colder. I find this whole floor to be a lot colder. The prison gets quite warm, but for some reason, death row is always much colder than the rest of the place. In 1862, I'm sure you can imagine that the medical field wasn't nearly as advanced, and disease inside of the prison was rampant. Epidemics flew through here like never before, and downstairs in the basement was the quarantine area. Funny enough, it's actually right next to the prison kitchen. It was in this area that uh, anybody suffering from a disease that could be contagious was sent down. They were usually sent there to live out their final days before dying of whatever disease they had. When they built the bridge next door uh, to the hostel, they actually found mass burial sites. Hundreds of people thrown into a pit. It was believed or it was said, people from the prison, anybody who died here, they might be just wrapped in a blanket and thrown into this pit. One of the reasons that they think the hauntings occurred here is actually because of these mass burial sites in the back courtyard. The injustice of it all to so many people. Next door to the hostel, there's a courthouse. And it was in that courthouse that prisoners would have been sentenced to whatever they were sentenced to. They would be brought underground and up by the solitary confinement cells. This was done on purpose. The prison was designed so that anybody entering the prison would have to see the kind of torture that other prisoners endured. It was a warning sign. You misbehave, you'll end up in the solitary confinement cells. They have an area in the jail they call the hole. And this is where prisoners would ta be taken for six months at a time. And even when you tour the hole to this day, you can see little etchings on the floor where they had grabbed something in order to make a mark on the floor of the prisoners. And many of them died in the hole. And uh, to go into the hole yourself today is quite an eerie experience. Downstairs in the solitary confinement cell, I know that I almost always feel that there's somebody always behind me. And I, I do quick looks behind me to see who's there, and there's never anybody there. Other people say that they've seen people, that they've heard footsteps. That whole area downstairs, people have said they hear screams, that they hear crying, anything like that. Doors being slammed. All sorts of crazy things happen down there. I don't think a particular age group, such as older teenagers, would be any more susceptible than adults. Of course, younger teenagers and children are much more susceptible to their imaginations and to suggestibility. But if you, if you take the group that's going through the Ottawa Youth Hostel, they're probably, most of them are late teens. Now, they, they may be more susceptible not because of their age, but because of, of their outlook on the world. Many people who stay in youth hostels are, are trying to seek adventure and and opening all kinds of doors to different belief systems. And that may make them more susceptible. They may be more rejecting of sort of the, the conservative approach to the world that everything can be explained normally and they're interested in finding all kinds of new levels of meaning. So that may make them more, more prone to, to experience ghosts by misinterpretation of normal things around them. Well, there's a back stairway in the jail that's connected to the governor's house. But back in the 1970s when they were restoring the jail, they found an inscription on the wall going down the stairs and the inscription read that I am a vampire and I will feast on your body. If you want to find the way of the path you need to climb 94 or 95 stairs and you will find a book at the top of the bookshelf. There is a story about the side staircase which is known as the secret staircase and there is an inscription on the wall an inscription about um, vampire ghosts. Now, the story goes is that one of the children, one of the, the warden's children was on his way out to school and it was a va vampire ghost. I mean, we're not talking blood-sucking ghosts. We're, these types of ghosts are ghosts that prey on the weak, the young, the sick, the old. Anyways, and that this child was out to school one day and that this ghost actually possessed the child. This child being young, this child being ill. And he got sicker and sicker. And uh, they were able to tell from little things that he did that this was not normal. This child never really, I mean, he was an active, loving, happy child until one day things switched and that this little poem was written inside the staircase. So there are rumors that there is a vampire 
pot in this jail. They don't know who did it. They don't know how it got there. It was just there. For anyone wishing to have an experience seeing a spirit, the Ottawa Carlton Jail is a place to stay. You're guaranteed that you'll see something, feel something, or hear something there.